I think what is unique about Columbus, even though we see this across the country, is just how close by a lot of these communities are mm -hmm. and the differences in outcomes. Mm -hmm. Hi, welcome to See You Live. My name is Walker Evans. I'm the co-founder of ColumbusUnderground.com. Joining me today is Morgan Harper, lawyer and former congressional candidate. Thank Mor you. Morgan, yeah. thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Cool. Uh, wanted to uh, devote one of these episodes to talking a bit about economic segregation. Mm -hmm. um, it's a gigantic topic. Obviously, yeah. you know, people could spend you know three, four, five hours and, and not hardly even scratch the surface. So mm -hmm. we're going to talk about it for five minutes. Okay, great. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> um, in 2015, there was a study uh, that was conducted uh, nationally that said that Columbus was the second most economically segregated uh, region in the country, second only to Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. So obviously this is not uh, a new problem in major cities. Uh, a lot of it uh, feels like the effects of you know systemic issues that have happened over decades and decades. Do, mm -hmm. do you think the problems today in Columbus uh, can be traced back you know to re the redlining of neighborhoods and white flight and some of mm -hmm. those, bi those bigger issues that we've never really addressed? For sure. And what's interesting in, in Columbus too is just how recent a lot of that history is. So you know I actually met someone um, during the campaign that I just completed, who remembered the neighborhood I grew up in, Berwick, on the mm -hmm. east side, mm -hmm. when it was almost entirely a Jewish and white neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And he remembers the day that a black family moved in. And that's when they had a visit the next day from a real estate agent and was like, when are you gonna move? Mm -hmm. Are you ready to move mm -hmm. yet? Mm -hmm. And as you probably know at this point, that's a predominantly black neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, though also has some shifting demographics going on, but that's when white people, a few years after that, stopped going to Columbus City Schools on that side of town, more yeah. or less, right? right. So, uh, you know, a lot of these things are connected to historic policy um, decisions that were intentionally made. I think what is unique about Columbus, even though we see this across the country, is just how close by a lot of these communities are mm -hmm. and the differences in outcomes. Mm -hmm. That you can just go down Main Street for a 10 minute drive and enter and exit and enter again, mm -hmm. very different worlds. Right. Um, so that to me has always been a little bit of the peculiar thing about Central Ohio and just the, the collection of suburbs and different school districts and how much that drives the opportunity that people have. Yeah. Well, m mentioning, you know, suburbs, school districts, neighborhoods, you know, th this is not just a city of Columbus problem. It's a regional, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Central Ohio problem. Right. Do you think that that, um, and again, I don't think this is unique to Columbus with, with every city. Do you think this is a really tough issue to address because it's multi-jurisdictional? You mm -hmm. know, you need a solution that's regional in its scope and how do you get all the different players to the table from New Albany to Grove City and, mm -hmm. and everything in between? I think that's part of it and it also involves people making a personal sac what might be perceived as a personal sacrifice mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. i mean especially because so many of these things yeah are connected to di different jurisdictions and are connected to different school districts well who's going to be that person that says you know i'm really committed to staying in columbus and even if i'm a little bit concerned about what the educational experience is going to be like i'm committing to make it happen mm -hmm, and put mm -hmm. my child you know you'll hear that from a lot of people in that position mm -hmm. um no i mean i think what it's going to it is going to take a whole generation of work to undo the situation that we have allowed to unfold in our community and across the country. And uh, and it's a time to be thinking big and thinking creatively and also rethinking how we fund our public schools. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you think that there's opposition on both sides? Because when you talk about economic segregation, it means, you know, higher income neighborhoods and lower income neighborhoods or whether mm -hmm. they're neighborhoods or suburbs, whatever the, the difference is. Um, and everyone is kind of walled off from each other. Mm -hmm. And if you had more uh, people of all income levels living in kind of the same area, that would be the solution or right. solution or the, the opposite of the yeah. problem but bringing you know uh, affordable housing to mm -hmm. an upscale neighborhood is mm -hmm. always going to receive pushback mm -hmm. and likewise if people of wealth are moving into a low-income neighborhood it's generally seen as gentrification and right. that's going to receive pushback yeah. do you think that there's a way to overcome some of those sort of mental barriers to work toward more inclusive neighborhoods I think so. I think so. But uh, it also has to be paired with policy changes. So mm -hmm. take, for mm -hmm. example, you know, like issues like exclusionary zoning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if communities are not allowing different types of developments to come into their to their neighborhoods, well, yeah, you're you're taking a stand that okay, we are okay with reinforcing economic segregation, mm -hmm. and uh, and this is a time where we can, as a community, say no, we don't like what this has led to, and let's do things differently. And yes, the suburbs have a part to play in that. 
the city of Columbus has a part to play in that. And it also has to be a state and national conversation as well. So I'm optimistic, but yeah, housing also uh, is connected to that. And then, you know, that's one thing I would always, a question I was always, always get on the campaign is like, well, you're talking about housing, you're talking about jobs, you're talking about all, all of yeah, these things. It's yeah. like, well, yeah, if this is our fundamental issue mm -hmm. as a country, mm -hmm. economic segregation, income and wealth inequality, um, then there are a lot of things, a lot of policies that have to change to address that. Yeah. It's I not mean, gonna be a quick fix. Oh, sure, yeah. I mean, it, it touches those things, education, safety and security, you know, mm -hmm. anything and everything, it's all it's all tied together. Do, do you think that uh, makes it tough? You know, if, if I'm an individual concerned about economic segregation, like mm -hmm. where do I even get involved or where do I begin? It's more mm -hmm. of a, conceptual you know problem that touches everything versus mm -hmm. something I can just go in and say oh, I can volunteer my time to fix this mm -hmm, or this mm -hmm. well I always recommend that people get involved in the political process mm -hmm. because if you're electing leaders that have this mindset of doing what they can with their position to implement policies that are going to address this like that policies that could be local like a exclusionary zoning thing or that are going to green light different types of housing developments into their suburb for example then you are playing a role in helping to shape different sorts of communities thinking about transportation i mean that's another barrier to columbus being more economically mobile is that jobs are clustered in certain places and people are not necessarily well connected to get to those jobs uh, or going to be spending you know a disproportionate amount of money to get around the region right, and so right. um what what platforms people are running on matters not just thinking about purely party affiliation or endorsements or what have you uh, we have to really look at this at every level and, and hold leaders accountable to be committed to doing something about it cool nice well we'll link to a bunch of other articles and conversations and resources to to kind of keep this going because obviously we've barely touched upon anything in, <laughs> in this very short amount of time yes it's yeah. a big topic this yeah. one yeah cool but i appreciate you taking the time to, to talk today no thanks so much for having me